I'm starting to think this might be old growth because everything's really old here. Average tree size is a uh, two and a half to three feet for the large ones. And then there's an understory of trees and an understory of shrubs, mature shrubs at that. So forests in Rhode Island are probably, they look 50 years younger, but also could be the habitat that affects them because it's much drier and this is a very wet forest. And these are oaks, oak tulip. There's a giant black birch there. We have red maple growing in the shade. This is uh, an Australia. I think Australia Virginiana, I showed you it. It's the uh, hop hornbeam. And then right next to it, we have the hornbeams growing. So it's definitely, it's definitely quite the, quite old forest. Here we have leaves from the northern red oak. Uh, northern red oaks have these kind of wider um, and less pointy or less sharp. And they're not very lobed. And they're very wide leaves. And uh, you typically only see them in richer areas. Where he's in the uplands, you get a lot of black oak, which have deep lobes, and scarlet oak, which have small, very deep lobes. This is likely a 50-year-old Australia Virginiana. So this is a shade tree that germinated in the shade, and it's been growing in the shade for 50 years or more. Same thing with these other musclewoods. And we have a big hickory here. Not a huge hickory, but it's definitely a hickory. Big poppy red oak, probably three and a half, nearly four feet around. It's a big tree. It's the biggest one I've seen today. Or one of the big, yeah, it's definitely the biggest one I've seen today. Beautiful. Big poppy. And we got lots of big elbowy tulip trees too. So right up there, you can kind of see Right beyond this tree, right here, that is split rock. That is the namesake of uh, this uh, glade. It's a big granite glade. There's pitch pines up there, and I'm going to go up there after I go down towards the river. You can actually see the river right here. And we're in a forest with probably over half the trees being tulips. Here's a nice sugar maple right there. Very nice. Here's an old and tall eastern hemlock. A lot of dead fallen trees in this section. A lot less tulips. But there is more sugar maple. Uh, right here we have a dead chestnut oak. We have some hemlocks remaining. A bunch of birch. These are shade grown birch. And there's a bunch of smaller shade grown birch throughout. Here we have uh, beautiful Calicladium imponens, another very common moss in this region. So I made it to the top of this glade, and it uh, goes straight down. It's actually a big ledge, kind of like that one is, just one that's lower down. And then uh, all the creeks, they flow into this kind of fork area. And then there's likely another creek on the other side of this that flows into this lowland. And then that's, this is the Connecticut River right here. So these are steep rocky forests. At least over on this side. And here, they're much more rich. Wherever you see the mountain laurel, there's uh, thicker soils. Because it, the mountain laurel pretty much stops directly on the rock here. The deepest soils are where I just was in that valley. There's a nice American beach right there, too. Here we have some nice Thelia hertella and a little Cladonia moss. 
cool. More beautiful calcladium and ponens on this old rotten hemlock log. Hemlock log. Waterfalls. Looks like it uh, has went from being granite in the uplands to being uh, sedimentary rocks. But I might be completely wrong. It might still be granite. But it's looking like sedimentary. We'll compare it with the uplands when I get up to Split Rock again. This is the Connecticut once more. Now this is more like the granite I've been seeing before. It's very chonky and doesn't really have much fractures. Whereas the other one was more fractured horizontally. Look at that nice big vein of quartz right there. Nice waterfall too.